And good morning, everybody. It's almost to be out the afternoon here. I'm John Thomas Hill. Welcome to the Rutherford Sports Network. And as you're probably well aware by now, um, there have been some NBA games canceled, some NHL games canceled, and some N- MLB games canceled because of the recent uh, incident that happened in Kenosha, Wisconsin involving an African-American man and the police. And once again, athletes, African-American athletes, as well as their Caucasian counterparts, as well as their Hispanic counterparts, have once again rallied uh, to uh, the Black Lives Matter banner and to once again uh, espouse social justice and civil rights which they should, and I not only respect it, I wholeheartedly support it. Here's the thing. This is not anything new for those of us who have a sense of sports history. There are people out there for some reason who believe that athletes should just shut up and play sports. They're the same people that say, well, entertainers should just shut up and entertain. Actors should just act. Musicians should just play music. Well, if you're working in the plant, just shut up and do whatever you do there. They're just as much of a citizen as you are. They have just as much of a right to express their opinion as you do. You just don't like their opinion and you hate the fact they have a more visible platform than you do to express their viewpoint. Many of these athletes have a bigger platform than I do. Many of these actors have a bigger platform than I do. But I'm going to express myself, that's for sure. But, and you're you're not hindered in expressing yourself. You got social media, you got Spreaker, which is where I do this podcast from. You do Anchor, which I need to do get back to. I'm going to be talking about that more in the near future as to what I'm going to be doing there. Um, so, yeah, I'm... When it comes to athletes and politics, it's just like entertainers and politics. They're just citizens, like you and me, expressing their opinions. They just happen to have a bigger platform to do it on. And they tend to may not be exactly the mainstream that you want it to be because they see a lot more than you do. Here's the thing that bugs me, okay, about people in the so-called flyover states, of which, which I live in one, that complain that L.A. and and New York always dominate things and such. Well, of course they do. They're media centers. They have massive populations. And that's been throughout history. If you look at history throughout all of history, urban areas tend to be more liberal than rural areas. I don't care what society it is. I don't care what faith it is. I don't care... You can go to Iran right now. The people in Tehran and the other bigger cities will generally be more liberal than their rural counterparts. This isn't anything new. So when you see people here in my area, which is in the boondocks of western North Carolina, complaining about, well, why are these NBA players sitting out? You know, they're paid to play and all this because they feel... That there's something bigger than sports. And by the way, the NBA is a pretty darn socially justice-oriented league. They they are the biggest league of African Americans, of African American influence out there. That's where African American culture in many ways resonates in the NBA. I'm surprised... that they don't have a commissioner, African American commissioner already. I'm, I, I would dare say that when Adam Silver steps down, the next commissioner will probably be African American. 
Now, who that will be, I have no idea because I don't follow it as much as I used to. But I follow enough to know what's going on. Now, here's here's the thing that bugs me the most is that there these these people on the right side of politics, not the correct side, but the right side, conservative side of politics, seem to think that athletes and entertainers and such should just shut up because, you know, so-called they are the real people, the real working people. Okay? A, not every athlete is a liberal. I dare say that there are quite a few athletes who are conservative in some ways. Not every actor or musician is a liberal. Look at country music. There are plenty of conservatives over there. There's been conservatives in rock. There's been conservatives in pop. Not every actor is a liberal, as I said earlier. There are plenty of actors who are conservative. The majority are, or it seems to be that way. Some never go anywhere near politics because they, they just want to act and do their own thing and not have to worry about it. And not every person that lives in the so-called flyover states, the so-called real America, as you keep hearing, is a conservative. I dare say it's probably more like 55-45. Now around here it's probably 60-40. It's just that many of the people who are... There are a lot of people who lean either slightly left or slightly right. I tend to be a moderate who leans left more often than right. And when I do lean right, it's mainly just because of fiscal conservatism. And I don't necessarily mean raising taxes or cutting taxes or anything like that. I mean just live with our means. If that means we have to raise taxes, then at least be honest about it. When it comes to athletes, yeah, they're rich. Most of them are. Some of them aren't. Some of them are living better than you do. Most of them do. But here's the thing. A lot of these athletes come from underprivileged backgrounds. Some may not have had a father at home. And they realize their platform can help people. Some of them have done that. They've gone out of their way to help people. And they want to do more. That means getting more people together to do it. Right now in America, there is this belief that, and I think it's a very wrong belief, that some, somehow on the conservative side of things, that the so-called real America, which they basically mean any state that's a red state, or any state that's not California, New York, or the Northeast, or any major urban area, is the so-called real America. This is, this is something that the right has been doing a lot longer than Trump's been around as president. A lot longer. It's because they like divisions. It's been going around for a very long time. And to me, it, it, it's exacerbated by these people who go, well, these athletes are spoiled and all of that, and, you know, just like, you know, it, it's, it's excuses. It's the fact you don't like what they have to say. And you don't want to have to deal with uh, what they have to say, so you just instantly dismiss their argument, because you don't want to have to deal with the fact that they may be right, and you may be wrong. Okay? They may have a greater perspective on things than you do. You may be a white guy in a white town in the middle of America that is a small town that is not a few whole lot of black people or Hispanics or 
Asians or anything like that, and you are limited to that perspective. Where those of us who've traveled a bit, and I've not traveled as much as I'd like, certainly not, but I've seen a lot. I've met a lot of people, a lot of people who have a diverse range of opinions. And my opinions have come about because of that. And they do not fit the so-called mainstream around here because a lot of the folks around here haven't been out all that much. And if they do, they tend to go to a lot of the same places, very rural places and all of this. Here's, here's the big problem. With, with this dismissal by the right of athletes who... It, it's, it's the same garbage we see all the time. It's, it's this idea that conservatism and patriotism are one and the same, that the, the right tends to per perpetuate. It's wrong. You want to know why? Go back to the Revolutionary War. Do you know what side conservatives at the time were on? The British side. They didn't want to split from Britain and form this new nation. What about the abolitionists? They were the liberals of their time. The conservatives want to keep slavery because it worked for them. Conservatives wanted to keep women from voting. Every major societal advancement in American history, for the most part, has been because of liberals, not conservatism. Because at its very definition, conservatism doesn't want to change, whereas progressives want to change things. So here you have a president who wants to drag us back to the so-called good old days, which they were not really that good old, day, good old days. It's just the perception of it was. And the reason for that is, it's because whites were in charge and blacks knew their place. That's the reason. Or at least that's what they want to think. African-American athletes... African-American actors and musicians and such. And there are other African-American professionals. African-American politicians generally tend to be Democrats. And you hear occasionally from the right that, oh, the Democrats don't really do that well for African-Americans and whatnot. Well, guess what? Compared to what the Republicans have done, especially since the Southern strategy by Richard Nixon in the 1960s, um, when a lot of those Southern racist Democrats switched to um, the Republican Party because Lyndon Baines Johnson had the audacity to sign the Civil Rights Act in 1964? Yes, folks. There is that dichotomy. You can't go back and tell, well, the Democrats were racist. Or, or, no, they were at one point. There, there are probably some that are. Democrats are not exactly the Lock and step party of the Republicans are here, and and, Paul, and athletes for some reason get this because most of the athletes, when you think of an athlete in sports, professional athlete, what do you think of? African American, primarily. That's the way it is today. The vast majority of them, the big superstars, are African American. In football and basketball, not so much in baseball anymore. Because that sport has lost luster in the African American community. It's more of a Hispanic and become more of a Caucasian sport again. But back in the 60s and 70s, and to a certain point in the 80s, that was an African American sport. Hockey is really the only sport that where Caucasians are still in the majority. And even there, you have athletes. Speaking, of, this is not just a color thing either. There are athletes who are white that are side with the Black Lives Matter movement. There are some who don't. There are some who are really ra radical, rightist. Kurt Schilling, for example, <laughs> the former pitcher. Yeah, he's way out there on the right. But you, you, do you want do you want him to shut up? 
There are conservative athletes out there. Do you want them to shut up? Of course not. When you say athletes should shut up and play, you're only saying the ones that are, are opposed to you because you don't want to hear what they have to say because they have the audacity to disagree with you. You don't want them to participate in this political debate because they make more money than you do. They're better at their position at, at, in athlete, athletics than you ever hope to be in your youth. And I dare say there's probably some jealousy. And here's the one thing that's going to hit the nail on the head as to why all these flyover states hate the urban areas and such. It's an inferiority complex. For decades now, more and more professional athletics in the three major sports in America that we've dominated, football, baseball, and basketball, have been dominated by African American athletes. Many of them are from urban areas, especially in basketball. Not all of them are, but some of them are. What is amazing is that people don't recognize this. It used to be that all the sports were dominated by whites. And then the 1960s that come along, the civil rights movement, more and more athletic, more and more athletes get the of Af African American athletes get the opportunity to play professional sports. There is expansion. There was the ABA in the 60s and 70s. There was the American Football League. There was the um, World Hockey Association. That really didn't have much to do with African Americans getting a sport, although there were some there. But what amazes me is that up until that point where you had the ABA and the American Football League come along, those two sports were primarily African, uh, Caucasian American. Football became more African American in time, but it took a long time to get there. A lot of it was the fact that the South looked at the North and they started seeing them getting better and their football teams not getting as, as good, and they realized they had to integrate to keep up. That's the reason you saw Alabama bring in African American players, because Bear Bryant wanted to compete. He was losing out on great athletes because the school didn't want to integrate the football team. He finally convinced them to integrate it because he wanted to compete. It wasn't some sort of grand gesture deep within his heart. Just, he, was, he was losing football games. He was losing recruits. He was to better to other colleges because they would allow African Americans to play football there in Alabama for a long, long time and other schools in the South. Same deal, they didn't let them play. Same in college basketball. For the longest time, they didn't. But in the 60s, things changed. And with that change, more African Americans had a platform and they were going to use it. Let me take you to 1968 Mexico City, the Summer Olympics. Tommy Smith and John Carlos finish, I believe, first and third in the 200 meter dash. They get up on the victory stand. I believe the third, the, the silver medalist was an Australian. I can't remember his name right offhand. They get up on the stand. At the time, the Black Panther movement and the Black Liberation movement had a symbol. That was an upraised fist. I believe it was the right hand they did. I may be wrong about that. In a black glove. That was a sign of black power. Which was a big deal back then. And to some cases it still is to some folks. They do this salute during the National Anthem. They're sent home right afterwards. There's a lot of kerfuffle in the media. About this. About disrespecting the anthem. So the Kaepernick thing is not new. <laughs> um, 
if I remember correctly, uh, the former Chris Jackson, now McMood Abdul Roof, I believe that's his name. <laughs> um, he tur he converted to Muslim to Islam, and this is like in the mid '90s, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. Correctly, when he was Chris Jackson, he played at LSU. He he became a professional basketball player, and he converted to Islam. And he's he it was after this was after the first Gulf War. And he looked at that situation. He didn't like what he saw. He didn't like what the country was going through and what, what he was what, what he saw in the country. So he, I don't think he, he I don't think he knelt at the anthem. He turned his back on the flag. This was a huge kerfuffle at the time. There were a lot of commentators who were tish 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 tisking this whole thing. I wasn't entirely 100% supportive at the time because I th felt like that it was divisive. And I'll be honest with you. Four years ago when Colin Kaepernick took his knee, I felt like at the time that it was divisive because I felt it was a mistake. You have a right to protest. I fully understand why you're protesting. I felt the tactic that you were using to protest was going to backfire on you. In a way, it did. In a way, I was wrong. Because sometimes you've got to do what's controversial and do what is not popular to get the point across. Had Colin Kaepernick not taken that knee, would, would the Black Lives Matter movement have made the impact they've made, especially in an administration that's very hostile toward that very thought? Because of this progressive movement we're seeing right now, the Washington football team is called that and not the Redskins. You're having honest discussions about changing the name of the Cleveland Indians to something else because, it, I mean, it, Cleveland Indians offends two different groups of people, Native Americans and actual Indians from India. I don't think Indian Americans from India would uh, like Muhammad Ga Muhammad Ga Mahatma Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi sorry not Muhammad Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi uh, an image of Mahatma Gandhi on the union force of the Cleveland Indians I don't think that would be kosher and of course the Atlanta Braves my favorite team would I be okay with a name change yeah yeah, I'd be okay with it. It would take some getting used to. I'm sure there would be plenty of people who would who would gnash their teeth going, oh, it's all this political correctness and all this. And to some extent, yeah, the PC culture has gone a little too far at times. Trying to basically try and find any little thing that might be conceived as racist on people just so they could have something to stab somebody with, figuratively speaking, of course. Not thinking that maybe these people have changed their minds over the years and just haven't announced it yet. But there are t but the reason pol political correctness became about was because we were disrespecting minorities in such really pathetic ways. I remember learning about it in a Rolling Stone article 30 years ago. There was a, if I remember correctly, there was an Ivy League school, I think it's Harvard, where there were two African American women plus size women um, who were walking on the sidewalk. There was a white guy in the looking out the window. I don't know if it was a dorm hall or whatnot, but he, he looked down and yelled out, they called him water buffaloes. That's disrespectful. It's highly disrespectful. It wasn't funny. Fifty years ago, people would have laughed at it. Even African Americans would have laughed at it. But that, but that was because that was a reflex of skill back then to try and fit in. We now realize that that kind of quote unquote humor hurts. And now we get back to athletes for a second. 
every so often you'll hear, I mean, there was the uh, incident, and I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, it was the guy that was selling individual cigarettes in, in New York City that he got taken down. Why you would take down a guy that's, that's selling individual cigarettes, you know, yeah, he was resisting, but did you have to put a chokehold on him? This isn't anything new. 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago, the Rodney King incident, 1991, the video comes out about that beating. And I'm looking at it going, why did they take the, that many people and they had to use that kind of force to subdue a guy? One guy, I don't care how strong he is, grab his legs. You know, yeah, you know, grab his legs, you take his legs out from under him. You can pretty much, any guy, any size guy, regardless of what race, creed, color they are, you know, a big guy, you put him to the ground on the left, take his legs out, he's on the ground, smaller guys can get on top of him. There were about six or seven police officers, all of them white, with this one black guy, and they were beating on him. And the only reason they got caught was somebody was videotaping it. This was at a time when video cameras were huge, bulky things. And it's not like now when you've got your cameras on your phone, you've got your cameras on your tablets, you got you can have cameras anywhere. You can have little tiny cameras in your car. And it's showing that it's been going on this whole time. This isn't anything new. This isn't a bashing police either. I'm sure there are plenty of police officers out there who hate this stuff, but they're, they're told that they're supposed to protect the thin blue line. That any, any complaints about police are an attack on all police. That any, any calls for reform is an attack on all police. This is perpetuated in major cities by police unions who almost always lean right because they are, by and large part, protecting all police officers, not just the good ones. This is a problem with, political, with union movement and not just police unions. There is a tendency to want to protect even the bad, the bad workers, because, hey, they pay dues too. I'm not going to go into all the history of police brutality and all of that. It does exist. It's out there. It may not be as, as frequent as some people may think on the left. It may not be as rare as some people may think on the right, but it is a problem, it, exists, it, it does exist, and it needs to be addressed. There are reasons why the criminal justice system is unfair right now. It's that blatant. And these are why the athletes are doing what they're doing. They're primarily African American, or if they're not African American, they have a lot of dealings with African Americans. Not just athletes, but other game officials, team officials, people that work at the arenas, their own fans. So if you want to boycott the NBA and the NFL and Major League Baseball and even the NHL for taking political stands that you don't like, go right ahead. You won't be missed. Change is coming for the better. You may not like it. You may not think it's better, but it is better. And these athletes are standing up for what is right, in my opinion. Not only is it my opinion, it has been proven that things get better when you have more equal rights for everybody, where there, there is equal protection under the law. It gets better for everybody. That is proven. And it's a disgrace 
that we have people who are defending that 17-year-old shooter in Kenosha, Wisconsin, who went across the border from Illinois to Wisconsin, had a gun with his mom driving, by the way. Why would you why would you do that? Why would you take your kid knowing with a gun with an AK forty AK not an AR fifteen. I keep wanting to say AK forty seven AR fifteen. A seventeen year old kid. And he shot two people dead and wounded a third. First of all, even if the protests were violent, why are you putting your kid in that in, in that situation? Yeah, I'm fine with, with kids standing up for what they believe in and all that. But if there's danger, and this goes for the BLM movement, make sure you don't have kids in dangerous situations. Try to be as nonviolent as you can be, but if you're being provoked... Not just by police, and there are some police that will provoke this. Not all of them. And let me stress, let me stress, not all police are like this. But there are too many bad apples that are spoiling the bunch. There are a lot of cops who are indifferent, who don't want to confront, or who, who, who get tired of it being compared to other. Well, you take a stand for damn, for Christ's sake. You take a stand against these people. There's a problem. There is a need for police reform. We need to get rid of these bad apples. There's too many of it. It's too blatantly obvious. And it's not an attack on all police if you want that if you want police reform. If I were a teacher, at one time I wanted to be a teacher. If I were a teacher and I had bad teachers, I want them gone. I'd want them gone. Nothing personal, but if you're not cutting the mustard, if you're not doing what right by your students, or if you're abusing your students, or if you're not teaching them properly, I want you gone. If I'm a good, if I was a cop, and I'm doing all the right things, and I see abuse and corruption, I want those cops gone. They're making my job harder. And yes, there are corrupt cops in America. Not all of them. But there are plenty of examples. And what's sad is, instead of weeding out this corruption, in many cases, they're protecting it. Sometimes when you go up against corruption, you're going to face a lot of opposition, including some that wouldn't mind killing you. And these athletes are standing up for that. They, they know people. They know people who have been affected by this. They themselves have probably been affected by this. There's been racism in this country ever since its beginning. And for Nikki Haley to come out and say, oh, there's no racism in America. There has been racism ever since we started. It's here now. It's not just here. It's all over the place. And in Europe, it's there. In in. Developed countries that have great, you know, in Denmark, Scandinavia and all that, there's racism there. Japan, there's racism. If you're not a Japanese person living in Japan, you're going to be seeing some racism. It's around. Everywhere. If, and it's been, it's been that way for centuries. It's not just an American thing, it's a civil, it's a human civilization thing. Racism's been there. And why you can't see that? If you're a white person, you can't see that. You're blind. You're willingly blind. There's been systemic racism for centuries in this country. Even before there was a country, there's been systemic racism. And it still exists. It's not as easily seen as you would think. But it's there. And what's troubling is in this current administration, it's grown. White supremacists used to be reviled, and they used to be 
and the dark edges of the internet. Now they're out and open. Now they're... They have a president they can be proud of because the president says they're good people. He said that. He said they're good people on both sides. White supremacists are not good people. None of them are. They're scum. Why? Because in their mind, there's only one skin color that deserves to live. And that's whites. Everybody else, that's what they want. They want to get rid of and just saying, well, you're segregated, you're one, you would like to see them dead. You'd like to see them gone. That's what you want. They don't want to admit it. Because admitting that makes them look like Hitler. Who, and now you've got people who proudly display the Nazi flag. And yet they complain when, oh my God, I got fired because social media exposed me for the racist I am. Well, guess what? Corporations generally don't like to employ people who are racist because if they find out that they have a racist, it's not going to go too well with their, for their, their PR department having to go, well, what are we supposed to do, fire them? Yeah. I don't like racist. I don't like people using the N-word. So I'm not exactly mourning for Tom Brenneman saying the the F word, the you know the the slur against gay people, and the way he said it, he's not that wasn't the first time he said it. There are there are people who've said the N word, have been lost their jobs, and they they whine and complain about. It. Well, guess what? If you didn't use that word, well, what about black people using the word? I don't like it either. There's plenty of African Americans who don't want their fellow African Americans using that word. There are some who believe it's their own little word that they can use, but white people can't use. Well, guess what? You keep using that word, that's going to mean white people are going to some white people are going to use it because they think that they can when they really shouldn't. So you shouldn't either. It's that simple. Before I, I, I know I've gotten way off in tangents and all that, but let me get back to the point I was going to make. The reason these athletes are protesting is because to them it's very personal. They've known people who've been victims of police brutality. They know people who've been victims of racism. They themselves have probably been victims of police brutality or police intimidation or police you know, not treating them equally as they would a white person. And they've been victims of racism. Oh, but they're making millions of dollars. Why do they have to complain? Do you not get the point? You can make millions of dollars, be a very famous athlete. You're driving down the car, you're driving down this road. A police officer sees you as an African American and decides you might look like a, a suspect. You might look like a suspect. Doesn't happen to whites all that often. I've never been pulled over or investigated for looking like a suspect. And I've been on this earth for nearly 50 years. But I've known African Americans who have been and they had a perfect. They had, had the alibi. They they didn't. In some cases, didn't even look like the person they were looking for. I've known that. And you don't think it doesn't happen? Of course it happens. Why would we not have these? Why are we having these protests if they're not happening? Is it some grand conspiracy to bring down America? No, these people are fed up. When you're fed up with something, you get you're like Popeye. I've had I've had all I can stand. I can stand no more. They're fed up. They don't want to be doing this. They want to go out and play basketball. They want to. Have, they would love nothing more than for racism to go away. 
so they can play basketball. And it's a shame. It's a shame they can't just do that. But because the way the world and this country is right now in relation to African-American relations with the police department and the police department's relations with the African-American community, they have to take a stand. Because you may think Donald Trump is great, but the truth is he's brought back something that we should have gotten rid of a long time ago. And that's racism. And I despise racists. I've had to watch African American friends of mine be called the N-word. And they couldn't do anything about it because if they did, they would get their ass kicked. And I wanted to join right along with them and beat some folks up. They know they're outnumbered. Especially in these parts. And I've seen how people talk about... uh, People I used to respect. Until I realized they were racist. Including friends of mine for a long, long time. But I didn't realize until recently. That uh, way they felt. And that's a really shocking thing. Oh, but you don't let politics come in between friends. Well, if, if if it exposes them to be racist. Or tolerant of racist. Or tolerant of police abuse. And let me stress again. I'm not saying saying all police are the same. But it's, it's happening. There's evidence of it happening. And it's not getting any better. And it's not being fixed. It's not being looked at. It's not, there's not reforms taking place. And if you blindly trust police officers. It's like tr- blindly trusting politicians. I want police officers to be trustworthy. I want them all to be trustworthy. But in order to be fully trustworthy, you have to be willing to be trustworthy to the people that you serve, including African Americans. And there's a reason why we have rights, even for criminals. Because how do you know for 100% certain they're guilty? There's a reason we have a trial system, trial by jury system. That's why we have an appeal system. To where they... You have to prove that they're guilty. They're innocent until proven guilty. I don't care what you've seen in the streets and all of that. Yeah, there are some folks who are scumbags. I know plenty of white people who are scumbags. I can guarantee you there are far more white people that are scumbags than African Americans. This is a simple matter of numbers. I learned a long time ago that regardless of the category. There are good people and there are bad people and there are indifferent people. And the ratios tend to stay the same regardless of what demographic you go through. Whether it's African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, blah, 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 gay people, straight people, transgendered, religious, non-religious, Christians, Muslims, blah, 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 the same deal is there. Why do we automatically think that all... um, why do we think all politicians? Why do we think all Muslims are terrorists? No, they're not. No, that's like assuming that every Christian's a KKK member. It's this assumption that, well, and there, and and it's, it's gone on and on and on. It's ridiculous. And these athletes are like people they know. They know people who are regular, everyday, average working people. They probably came from average, everyday working people. They've seen it. You just don't like the fact that somebody who's made it more successful than you are is telling you the truth of something that you want to stay true. Because it benefits you. I'm going to be perfectly frank here. Yeah, I'm white. I know white privilege. I'm not a rich person or anything close to that. But I know 
that if I'm in the same situation with a black person and the police are involved, odds are high, really good odds are that I'm going to be treated better than an African American person is. And that should not be that way, and I don't want it to be that way anymore. Should never have been that way to begin with. You don't like what I'm saying? Tough. I've been saying it for a long, 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 long time. And I'm going to keep saying it for a long, long time. I'll say it until I'm in my grave. And when I get into heaven, I'll be saying it there too. And if I can, I'm going to be saying it from the heavens down to the people down here. Because that's me. That's why I do these podcasts. If you like it, great. I'm happy. I'm glad you listen. If you don't like it, stop listening. I'm not getting paid for this stuff. This is a hobby. But I like it. I like being able to express myself. And I'm going to continue to express myself. If you don't like it, there's the door. Go somewhere else. Go to somebody that you want to listen to. That's it for today. Hope you have a good Friday. And I'll talk to you again soon.